Hey everybody, my name is Eric Kim and I am a park ranger here at Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. Uh, I started working with the National Park Service in the summer of 2021 at Grand Teton National Park. Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument was established in uh, 1937 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt to preserve over 330,000 acres of a representative part of the Sonoran Desert that is also home to the Oregon Pipe Cactus. Uh, this monument is located along the southern borders of Arizona. It's two hours south of Phoenix and so you do need to get out of your way to get down here, but you'll be rewarded with this remarkable desert environment. This area is home to over 2,000 different species of plants, uh, 300 different species of birds, and over 100 different species of reptiles and amphibians. You can also find evidence of over 16,000 years of human history right here, and so due to the sheer biodiversity and all the cultural resources in this area, uh, Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument was designated as a UNESCO International Biosphere Reserve, which means communities from all the local areas and international partners can come into this monument and study how we can help preserve this landscape. So for some of you who are interested in hiking throughout this monument, we do have several recommendations. If you're looking for something nice and easy to do, I recommend the Desert View Trail. It's a short 1.2 mile loop and you'll get to see lots of beautiful desert plants and learn about their traditional use. You also hike up to a ridge line where you get to see the desert from above, hence the name Desert View Trail. If you're looking for something more moderate, I do recommend the Victoria Mine Hike. It is around four and a half miles, but it's mostly flat. And at the end, you get to find the historical Victoria Mine area. If you're looking for something strenuous to do in this monument, we do have the Estes Canyon and Bull Pasture Hike. That is going to be around three and a half miles, but you do gain around 860 feet of elevation. So definitely bring plenty of water and be prepared for that. However, if you do go on that hike, you'll be rewarded with stunning views of the mountains and a view up top. So for those who need ADA accessibility, we do have the nature walk right behind the visitor center. It's a really short one-tenth of a mile walk and it's all paved, but you, out there you'll find the finest samples of what this desert has to offer. If you're interested in biking around, we do have roads that you could bike along on. Uh, we do recommend that you bring a mountain or gravel bike since these are dirt roads. People can bring their horses and we do have several designated trails where you can go out uh, horseback riding. Uh, we do have the Sunita Basin Loop. It's around three miles of hiking or eight miles for the longer section. And we also have the Victoria Mine and Lost Cabin trails. Uh, Victoria Mine, you're looking at four and a half miles round trip. Lost Cabin, you're looking at around eight miles round trip. You can also come out stargazing in this beautiful night sky. Uh, half of the park does happen after dark, so come out here and enjoy it. If it's your first time coming out and exploring this monument, I do recommend driving around and exploring this place. And the best way to do that is to go on the Ajo Mountain Drive. It's a 21 mile one way loop. So you are committed for that two hour drive. However, it's really scenic. It's a really great way to get to know this monument. If you stop by the visitor center, you can pick up one of our drive guides. And so as you follow along that drive, you'll notice all these signs with numbers on them. Uh, pop open the drive guide and you get to read and learn about the desert. If you're looking to do some more uh, 4x4 type drives, uh, there is the Puerto Blanco Drive. It's 41 miles and you are committed for around three to four hours uh, for the entire trip. Uh, remember, I said four by four, it, we do recommend having high clearance and four wheel drive. We do have a really incredible resource and that is known as the NPS app. You can download it on your Google Play or Apple Store. But basically, when you open up the app on your phone, you get to check out all the incredible national parks across the country. You can also download the information for offline use. And so when you go out to the national parks, which are not the best Wi-Fi hotspots in the world, uh, you can still take that information with you. 
Here at Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument, we have an audio version of our drive guide available in that app. So the busiest time of the season is during the winter from December to March. Uh, that is a time when the weather is a lot more tolerable, uh, but do remember to bring some layers because it can get freezing uh, at night. The less busiest time of the year is during the summer. Uh, why? It's because you can fry an egg on the pavement. It gets just that hot. However, that is also the time of the year when many of the cacti around here will start blooming. So this monument is home to over 30 unique cacti species. To my left, you will find the Oregon Pipe Cactus, but this is just one of the 30 different species of cacti you can find throughout this monument. Many of the cacti bloom does happen in May and June, and most of the wildflowers will be blooming during March. During the winter season is when we offer many interpretive programs. You can come and visit the visitor center and check out the patio talks that happen out in the back. Uh, the main campground is the Twin Peaks Campground. It, is, it has over 208 sites uh, for RVs and tent only. Uh, you do need to make reservations on recreation.gov. If you're interested in backcountry camping, uh, swing on down to the visitor center where the rangers will help you plan out your trip and give you the permits you need. We also do have the Alamo Canyon Campground. Now there's only four sites out there and they are primitive sites. So that means there's no running water, there's no electric hookups, and we do only require tents on the ground. Uh, you can come by the visitor center or check our website for more information. The Twin Peak Campground also offers ADA accessible facilities. The uh, restrooms and the solar showers are available for you all to use. The uh, closest areas for lodging will be the town of Ajo, which is 37 minutes up north from us. If you are lucky to come across some wildlife out here, we do have coyotes, uh, Sonoran pronghorns, we also have Gila monsters, rattlesnakes, scorpions, and all the fun desert creatures out here. Some of the birds that you can find out here are the cactus wrens, the phenopepla, the Gila woodpecker, and the curved-billed thrasher. So down at the visitor center, I encourage you to go and check out our exhibits. We have tons of information about this phenomenal ecosystem of the Sonoran Desert. You'll also learn about the history of this monument, ranging from the uh, Hohukam settlement in this region to the arrival of mining and ranching to the story that we now tell today. This national monument has over 95% of its land designated as wilderness, and that means not many parts of it has been fully explored and discovered yet. So when you're out there, you may come across something really cool and important. So make sure that any cultural or historic artifacts you find out here, you leave it where you find it, and you take nothing but pictures, because that way uh, people throughout the future generations can come across and feel the same excitement that you felt when you first found it. What brought me out to this monument was the sheer biodiversity of this landscape. If you look all around us, you'll see there's tons of plants all over the place. It is one of the greenest deserts in the world thanks to its two monsoon seasons during the summer and the winter. When I come out here and walk around, I get to learn and discover new things every day.